One of the stations that medical interview candidates traditionally find more difficult is interpretation and description of an unseen image. So in this video, we're gonna tackle how you would approach it and give you a structure to make sure you get through it and score full marks. So let's face it, sometimes medical school interviewers are feeling a bit mean and they like to give you strange or unexpected circumstances to deal with. And indeed, this is something that the GMC recommends that all medical students and potentially even medical interview candidates are exposed to. Some universities have historically tested this through interpretation of an unseen graph or image, the latter of which we're gonna focus on today. So the format usually goes something like this. You're presented with an image and asked to describe it to someone else, usually with some limitation, like you're describing it over the phone or potentially to a blind person who can't see it. This sounds really difficult and that's because it is, but in this video, we're gonna go over a structured approach that you can use to get through this kind of task and why that approach is actually really applicable to medical practice when you make it to being a doctor. So here's the image, and many of you might recognize it, it's actually quite famous. But it could actually be more useful if you don't, because that can cloud your judgment. And preconceived ideas about an image can actually make it more difficult to get through the task. So just watch out for that if you do recognize the image on the day. So let's work through it together. I've got the image here, you can see it on screen, and I'll take you through my thought process and the optimal way of dealing with this. So firstly, we should start with what it is we're actually looking at. It's not a photograph, it's not a lithograph, an etching, a line drawing, or a collage. We're looking at a painting, or perhaps a photograph of a painting. It's difficult to tell. The image is also in color. Um, if you've looked at a lot of paintings, you might be able to deduce that it's an oil painting, probably on canvas. And that's quite a lot of information before we've even started to describe what's actually in it. So now that we've established what it is, let's look at some of the gross features of this scene. We can see eight human figures, all of whom seem to be male, judging by their moustaches and beards, gathered around another figure lying flat on a bench, who seems to be dead, given the pale colour of his skin relative to everyone else's. Most of the figures are on the left-hand side of the image, but one on the right is holding the tendons of the left forearm of the dead body up for the other figures to see. The corpse's arm has been dissected from the fingertips up to the elbow, and this seems to be in a hall of some sort. We can see stone columns and arches in the background. The image is quite dark, um, particularly around the edges, and is much better lit as it were, in the middle, although we can't see an obvious light source. So now let's look at some of the more fine detail. If we look at the figures more closely, the seven men on the left are all dressed in quite dark, but fine looking clothes with lace ruffs around their necks, and they have several different colors of hair. Some of them have red hair, some brown, some blonde. All of them are quite pale, although some have rosy cheeks. The figure on the right has his left hand up and seems to be explaining something to the other men as he's looking at them. And he is also wearing a wide brimmed black hat, unlike the others who are all not wearing hats. There's also a large book open at the feet of the body in the bottom right hand corner of the image. Some of the men are looking at this book. Some of them are looking at the man on the right. The observer closest to the rightmost man with the wide brimmed hat is holding a sheet of paper with some text and drawings on it, although it's difficult to make out what these actually are. If we look very carefully, we can also see the name of the artist in the middle of the picture at the back, as well as the date in which we can assume the work was completed. If we look very, very closely, we can actually see that the belly button of the corpse is formed from a letter R, which is probably another sign as to who the artist is. So now that we've examined most of the features of the image, let's try and summarize what we've found. So this is an oil painting on canvas, lightly painted by an artist called Rembrandt in 1632. It depicts several men gathered around a dead body, with one man holding the tendons of the body's left forearm for the others to see in some kind of hall. Some of the men are looking at the man on the right, some of them are looking at a large book. So the final step now is to try and deduce what's happening and give our, our kind of evidence for what we're thinking. So given what we've discussed, I think this is an anatomy lesson for medical students, or maybe a public demonstration of anatomy, the rightmost man with the large hat being the teacher. I think this is supported by the open book that some of the men are looking at and the sheet of paper that one of the figures is holding. The figures all seem to be quite wealthy given the quality of their clothes and they're all male. So this may have been in a time 
or a society where women were not as educated as the men, potentially. We can also assume that the artist might be quite proud of this piece, given that they've signed it with their name and are therefore okay with other people knowing who painted it. We could also maybe ask some questions about why the men are so finely dressed for a potentially dirty environment, a dissection with fluids and things present. So this may have been a prestigious social event for which they were all dressed up, or again, maybe one that could only be attended by wealthy people. And we also don't know why this image exists. Did someone commission it? Maybe the artist did it for their own pleasure? We don't know, and this is the sort of thing that we'll have to draw our own conclusions about. So, as you can see, we got a huge amount of detail out of that image. This is a Rembrandt painting called The Anatomy Lesson of Dr. Nicholas Tulp, who was a Dutch surgeon and anatomist of this period. But what's really important is that none of the analysis that I did of that image actually required any knowledge of art, medicine, really, or anything in between. It was all very surface level analysis. I just said what I saw, which is the most important thing to do, and worked through the image methodically. And then we became a bit more freeform and abstract and were able to form our own ideas um, during the discussion at the end. So the structure that I used and I think you should use for interpreting unseen images is as follows. So just to start with, what is it? What's the medium? Is it a photograph, an etching, etc, etc? What is it that you've been presented with? What's the raw material? We can then look at the gross detail, get an idea of what's going on in the scene, who or what is involved, what are the key elements of the image that really leap out at you at first glance. Then once we've covered that, we can move into fine detail, the sort of thing that you can only notice when you're really inspecting each part of the image. It may help you to work through it, you know, clockwise maybe around the image or scanning left to right, just some methodical approach to make sure that you don't miss out any part of the image. Then once you've had a really good look, you should summarize what you've seen in maybe two or three lines. What are the really key gross elements and what are the key fine details? The reason we do that is to inform the discussion that happens as the final step based on the raw material, the gross detail and the fine detail. We've put it all together what do we think is actually going on? What can we deduce about the image based on everything we've pulled out so far? Now what's really really interesting to note about this is this structure is almost exactly the same way in which you would present clinical imaging. So for example if you're presented as a medical student or a doctor with an unseen say a chest x-ray or an ECG, an electrocardiogram, you start by saying what you have and who it belongs to. So, you know, this is the chest x-ray of John Smith, who is a 42-year-old man. It was taken on the 23rd of November 2019 from a posterior to anterior direction. Before you do any sort of analysis of the image or the source, you just say what you have. And then you proceed using that structure that we've just used. And the reason that this methodical approach is so important is so that we don't miss anything and we say what we see. We don't miss the important details, even if it feels really stupid and basic. I can't emphasize that enough. Say what you see. And why is this skill important? It's complex communication. It's how we get across potentially complex ideas to someone who doesn't see the same source that we do. Imagine, you know, describing an x-ray on the phone to a radiologist in the middle of the night or to your consultant if you're particularly worried about a case. Or even discussion as part of the MDT or describing an image to people who haven't seen it, so nurses, physiotherapists, pharmacists, healthcare assistants, the other people who need to be involved in the care of this patient. So your job is to communicate as much information about this image as possible so that the patient then receives the best care because everyone involved has the best understanding of the situation. Or indeed explaining what you see to the patient themselves. You've got to be able to take these complex ideas that only you understand because you've been trained in interpretation of these images, which the patient will usually have no ability to do for themselves, and then explain these complex ideas in a way that they can understand. So I hope you found this video useful, guys. That's how to interpret an unseen image as you might receive it in your medical interview and why it's important for when you become a doctor. Please be sure to hit that like button for me, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel if you found this video useful, tell a friend, 
share it around, I would really appreciate it. And be sure to go and check out postgradmedic.com for more useful articles and video resources just like this one to get you through your med school interviews. So thanks very much for watching guys. If you'd like to support the channel, there are a few ways you can do it. Most important, like, rate, subscribe, leave a comment, let me know what you'd like to see. You can support me on Ko-Fi, you can buy me a coffee essentially at that link and I drink a lot of coffee, it will go to good use. Lastly, you can get 10% off my favorite 3D anatomy app, Complete Anatomy 2020, 10% off the first year of your subscription using the referral link in the description below. Take care and I'll see you next video guys.